Hi, my name is Margaret Kosick. I'm an attorney at Coast to Coast Legal Aid, and I'm going to talk to you today about Medicare and Medicaid for seniors. If you don't know the difference between Medicare and Medicaid, hopefully you will by the end of this presentation. Since I'm an attorney, I have to do a little disclaimer here. Um, this is not legal advice. It's just general information to give you an overview of this area of the health law. If you'd like our help, please stay tuned until the end and I can let you know how to contact us. Next. Medicare is federal health insurance for seniors 65 and over some disabled individuals and people with end-stage renal disease. There are no income limits um, for, or asset limits for Medicare. Next. You may have heard of the different coverage areas of Medicare, Part A, Part B, Part D, Part C, but what do they cover? Next. Part A covers inpatient care in hospitals, skilled nursing facility care, hospice care, and home health care after a hospitalization or stay in a skilled nursing facility. Part B covers services from doctors and other health care providers, uh, outpatient care. It also covers some home health care for homebound patients in need of intermittent skilled care. And Part B also covers durable medical equipment like wheelchairs and walkers. Next. Part D is, a pres is prescription drug coverage. It's optional, but you may pay late enrollment penalty if you do decide to join later. You are required to join a Medicare approved plan if you get Part D. Uh, in order to join a separate plan, you have to have either Part A or Part B or both. Um, you can also get prescription coverage through a Medicare Advantage plan, which leads to our next slide. Part C is a Medicare Advantage plan, like an HMO or PPO. It's offered by private companies that are approved by Medicare. Advantage plans provide all Part A and Part B coverage. They may offer extra coverage such as vision, hearing, dental, or, and or health and wellness programs. Most plans include Medicare prescription drug coverage. The plans have to follow the rules set by Medicare. However, each Medicare Advantage plan can charge different out-of-pocket costs and has different rules for how you get services. So for example, they may limit uh, the in-network doctors. Next. You will automatically be enrolled in Part A and Part B the month you turn 65 if you're already getting Social Security or Railroad Retirement Board benefits. If you're under 65 and receiving Social Security disability, you'll be enrolled in Medicare 24 months after receiving benefits unless you have ALS. Uh, in that case, you are automatically enrolled the first month you're receiving the SSDI benefits. If you're not receiving Social Security or railroad benefits, you have to sign up for Medicare. You can sign up three months prior to your 61st birthday. If you don't sign up when you're initially eligible, there may be a delay in enrollment and possible late enrollment penalties. Next, Medicare is not necessarily free. In order to get free Part A, you have to have worked for about 10 years. Otherwise, it could be up to $499 a month. The standard Part B premium amount in 2022 is $170.10. However, you may pay more if your income's above a certain amount. You typically pay 20% of the Medicare approved amount for most medical services. Next. So Medicaid on the other hand is free health insurance provided to people with low income. There are several types of Medicaid, but the one that most people think of as full health, uh, the one that most people think of is full health coverage Medicaid. 
Traditionally, you have to have a categorical connection in order to qualify. Because Medicaid is needs-based, there is an income limit for each category. Next. Unlike Medicare, which is a federal program, Medicaid is a state-federal partnership. In Florida, Medicaid is managed by the Agency for Healthcare Administration. Um, the Department of Children and Families makes eligibility determinations for most, but not all types of Medicaid. When you apply for food, food assistance, you can also apply for Medicaid. Next. The most efficient way for individuals to apply is through the Department of Children and Families Florida Access Online. After the account is linked to the case, you can view uh, eligibility notices, applications, and other relevant information. Next. Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, provides cash to meet basic needs for foods, clothing, and shelter for low-income individuals. You have to be 65 and over, blind or disabled. Um, the federal benefit rate is $841 for an individual and $1,261 for a couple. So if you have income above that, you are not likely eligible. Anyone eligible for SSI automatically is eligible for Medicaid. So you do not need to apply for Medicaid through DCF if you're getting SSI. Next. Medically needy is for anyone who fits into a Medicaid category, but whose income is too high for Medicaid. It's for people with high medical expenses. So beneficiaries are assigned what's called a share of cost, which is kind of like a deductible. If medical expenses go above the share of cost, they qualify for Medicaid for the rest of the month. There is no income limit, but the asset limit is $5,000. Next. Duly eligible beneficiaries are enrolled in both Medicare and Medicaid. They are enrolled in either Part A or Part B or both um, and are getting either full Medicaid benefits or help with Medicare premiums and cost sharing, which leads to our next slide. A Medicare savings program is actually a type of Medicaid that covers Medicare premiums and or co-payments. Qualified Medicare beneficiary or QMB pays both the premiums and co-payments um, specified low-income Medicare beneficiary and qualifying individual program uh, pays premiums only. The highest limit for any of the Medicare savings programs is $1,529 per month currently. The asset limit for all of the programs is $8,400. So in order to apply for a Medicare savings program, you need to go through Department of Children and Families. Next. Extra help lowers Medicare prescription drug costs. It's not a type of Medicaid, but if you qualify for a Medicare savings program, you automatically qualify to get extra help. You can also apply directly through Social Security, not DCF. Some Part D plans have zero premium. In 2022, you should pay no more than $3.95 for generic and $9.85 for brand name drugs. If you are a dual eligible, um, you also have to pay the Part D copays, co but there are some dual Medicare Advantage plans with zero copays. Next. Long-term care Medicaid is a home and community-based services waiver program. It allows elderly and disabled beneficiaries to receive assistance in the home or in the community or in assisted living facilities. There is a wait list requirement due to limited funding. So if you contact the elder helpline, you can make an appointment for a phone assessment. You'll be placed on the waiting list and given a priority score to determine how soon you'll be released from the waiting list. 
The income limit is $2,523 a month for an individual and the asset limit is 2,000. Next. Some of the long-term care services include adult companion care, assisted living, attendant nursing care, care coordination and case management, homemaker services and personal care. Next. Institutional program Medicaid is another home and community-based service waiver program that helps people in nursing facilities pay for the cost of care. Um, plus it provides general medical coverage. ICP eligibility is determined by DCF. Medicaid can pay for skilled care for an unlimited time. The income limits are the same as long-term care Medicaid, but unlike that program, there is no waiting list. The recipient pays all monthly income plus uh, a monthly, I'm sorry, the recipient pays all monthly income minus a monthly personal needs allowance of $130. Next. Medicaid cannot be terminated during the COVID-19 public health emergency unless the beneficiary moves out of state or voluntarily withdraws. The public health emergency has been renewed through July 2022, and it is possibly going to be extended another 90 days. Um, it even could be continued through the rest of the year. Anyone who did not properly recertify or who is no longer eligible for Medicaid um, can't lose Medicaid during the public health emergency until, um, you know, until the public health emergency expires. Next. So if you're under 65 and you're not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid, you may be eligible for affordable coverage through the health insurance marketplace. If not, you could also possibly get coverage through Broward Health Moped or Memorial Primary Care where there is no premium um, and individuals only have to pay small copays to see a doctor and get prescriptions. You can also get referrals to see specialists, um, get medically necessary procedures and emergency care. Next. So if you would like our help, we can advise you on your eligibility for Medicare, Medicaid or other health coverage options. We can also help you by contacting agency representatives to help straighten out any problems you have we may be able to represent you in appealing a denial of your eligibility. We can possibly assist if you're denied coverage of medical services or prescriptions, or if you have any outstanding medical bills. Next. If you're 60 years old or older and need assistance with Medicare, Medicaid, or any other health coverage issue, please contact our intake staff. Thank you so much for watching and please tune in next Thursday for another episode of Legal Learning.